Genesis 31, picking up where we left off. Uh, Laban uh, has uh, um, lost his cattle. Jacob is going to leave. We're picking up in verse 8. If he said thus, the speckled be thy wages, and all the cattle bear speckled. If he said thus, the ring straight be thy wage by thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straight. So no matter what he did, now Jacob, we know, had uh, done some things with some reeds to pre, uh, breed certain uh, cows and sheep certain way. Verse 9, thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. He's talking to his uh, wives, uh, Leah and Rachel. And it came to pass in the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up mine eyes and I saw a dream. And behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring streaked, speckled, and grizzled. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob. And I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up thine eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straked, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of the kindred. God spoke to Jacob in a dream. God speaks to us today through his word, the Bible. That is why I want you to get into your Bible daily. Um, so let's understand, he speaks to us through his Bible, through his word. 1 Corinthians 13 says, For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. That's the word of God. Uh, this was a prophecy about when the Bible would be uh, complete, then we have no more need of prophecy. And I believe, you know, at the time when John gave us the book of Revelation, we then had no more need of uh, future prophecy. He's given us the Bible, his perfect word. That's how he communicates with us today. He once spoke through prophets, but the scriptures are complete. That partial prophecy isn't needed anymore. <clears throat> because it's all put together. It's not a part anymore. Now, some people say, I know in my heart, God said this. Here's the question you always have to ask. Does it line up with the Word of God? You have to check it out with the Word of God. If not, it isn't from God. Because Jeremiah 17.9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Your heart can deceive you. Let's move on in 14. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us from our father's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? For he has sold us and hath quite devoured also our money. You know, so uh, they have nothing left here. They're his wives. They say, for all the riches with God has taken, which God hath taken from our father, that is ours and is our children's. Now then, whatsoever God hath said unto thee, do. So they said, we already have all his uh, things anyway. Laban's cattle were theirs. Then Jacob rose up and set his sons on, and his wives upon camels, and he carried away all his cattle and his goods, which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting, which he had gotten in Pat. Padanaram, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Uh, she took his idols, and Jacob stole away unaware to Laban, unawares to Laban the Syrian, that he told them not that he fled. So he fled with all he had, and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. Uh, see, shepherds wouldn't have lived in the same area, so it might have taken a while to realize he was gone. <clears throat> Verse 23, And he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey, and they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. And God came to Laban the Syriad in a dream by night, and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. Um, when God speaks, we have to listen. So uh, the theme of today, how will you know what God says if you aren't in his word? One of the reasons uh, I've been doing these is to encourage people, if it's not just for five minutes, and it may just be simply reading through the book of Genesis right now, continuing on, reading into Matthew, uh, taking turns, Old Testament, New Testament. Uh, I would encourage you to get into the Psalms and Proverbs. But how are you going to know what he says? How are you going to know what he wants you to do if you aren't in his word? So many people think, well, I'm close to God. The way he speaks to us is through his Bible. So we have to be in his Bible.